In the northeast of Thailand, a family of enormous stone whales swim through a forest. These aren't real whales, of course. They're actually a part of a 75-million-year-old rock formation. A long time ago, this part of Thailand was just a desert. The movements of the Earth's crust push sandstone up to create these fascinating mountains. Reachable by anyone willing to spend a day hiking up the network of trails, this landmark is becoming increasingly popular with tourists. Once you reach the back of one of the whales and look down on the endless sea of green below, you'll know why. On these hikes, you'll find waterfalls, a wide variety of exotic plants and animals, and from the very top, you can even look straight across to the neighboring country of Laos. Their shapes look just like whales swimming together. No wonder this place is called Three Whale Rocks. What a way to see Thailand on the back of a giant stone whale. While digging in a Canadian mine in March 2011, a worker made a shocking discovery. They found a nearly perfectly preserved nodosaur specimen. This extinct dinosaur weighed in at around 3,000 pounds and grew to 18 feet. Despite being over 110 million years old, the nodosaur was so well-preserved that you can clearly see the heavy body armor and scaly skin that covered it. It took almost an entire year of painstaking work to uncover the incredible find. The fossil was finally unveiled in a Canadian museum in 2017. Unexpectedly, analysis of the skin showed shading that the nodosaur may have been capable of camouflage, like modern-day geckos and moths. This is in addition to the spines and scales that already make it a walking tank. Still being studied today, this nodosaur could go down as one of the most important fossils discovered in a long time. Its detail could help us to uncover even more of the mysteries of the past. The Voynich Manuscript is the world's most mysterious document. Since its discovery in 1912, the manuscript has been a complete mystery to everyone that comes across it. It is heavily illustrated with strange pictures of alien plants, unknown objects, and the zodiac symbols. But the most interesting aspect of it is the writing. The language used in the text is completely indecipherable. No one knows what it says, who wrote it, or where it was written. We don't even know if it was a real, functional language or if it was just created for this one text. The drawings of different plants are equally intriguing. Most of the plants in the manuscript are identifiable as plants, but they don't match up with any known species. A professor of applied linguistics in England claimed to have deciphered some of the characters in the book, but we haven't managed to uncover any more information about this mysterious text. If you're ever going to head down under, don't forget to pay a visit to the mystery craters in Queensland. Halfway between Bundaberg and Jinjin is one of Australia's most baffling finds, and that's saying quite a lot for Oz. In 1971, the site belonged to a farmer growing zucchini and potatoes. As the farmer tried to expand his farm, he kept hitting large rocks in the fields while plowing. When he took a closer look at the rocks in his way, he found marine fossils in some strange craters. The farmer passed his finds on to geology professors, who set out to research the formations. When the geologists began digging around the area, they uncovered a huge layer of sandstone and ochre stain that was completely covered with craters. There were 35 craters in total, and the layer of rock is estimated to be around 25 million years old. The scientists studying this mystery believe that hot springs, former ocean activity, and meteors are the prime suspects behind the craters. And I'd like to know about the characters who named those towns Bundaberg and Jinjin. <laughs> what fun names! Now, the Antikythera mechanism is an ancient computer of sorts that's still baffling scientists with its extraordinary design. Around 2,000 years ago, a Greek ship sank off the coast of the island of Antikythera. The wreckage was discovered in 1900, and divers salvaged some of its ancient artifacts. When archaeologists started sorting out the discoveries from the wreckage, they came across an object that didn't seem to fit with anything else. The wreckage was ancient, but they found an incredible device that seemed far too technologically advanced. 
The machine functioned as a calculator, allowing its user to follow time, the movement of stars, eclipses, moon phases, and even countdowns to events like the Olympics with amazing precision. This level of technology is almost impossible to explain coming from an ancient Greek wreckage. No mechanism would come close to the machine until the 14th century when geared clocks began to be built in Europe. How was the device created so long ago, 1400 years before its time? Could the sinking of the Antikythera and the loss of the calculator have held the development of technology back by hundreds of years? You plan to spend your summer vacation in Africa. The final destination is the Sahara Desert. It's located in northern Africa, stretching from the Atlantic Ocean to the Red Sea. You're excited to ride camels and learn about the region's rich cultures. You hop on an extensively long flight, and finally, you are here. You find yourself in the world's biggest hot desert. Can you believe it's 3 million square miles? You're ready for your first adventure after drinking liters of ice-cold water. The guide gives you a choice. You can spend two weeks visiting a collection of oases, or you can help them solve an ongoing local mystery. Deep into the desert, near this Algerian town, lies a mystery begging to be solved. A collection of huge, spotted circles in the sand. There are dozens of them, stretching for miles in a straight line. The circles were first identified via Google Earth images several years ago. People have debated them for years, but no one seems to know the answer. The strange thing is that they are so many miles away from any towns, roads, or human activity. The quickest way to discover the truth behind the circles is asking questions. You grab your notebook and set up to talk to locals. Everyone is helpful in this scenario – geographers, anthropologists, elders, and historians. The first person you talk to is a map expert. You need to understand if those circles were authentic or a satellite glitch. You end up interviewing the people who take Google Earth satellite pictures. The circles are really there. They appear in multiple pictures from many years. Then, let's understand why they are there in the first place. After two days of interviews, you have your first lead. The circles could be the result of oil activity. Experts explained why this would make sense. Algeria is a rich area for natural resources, so this would be a sensible guess. Usually, to find out if there is anything worth extracting, companies would undertake seismic surveys. Seismic surveys are a way of analyzing the Earth's surface by sending shock waves into the ground. Depending on how these waves bounce back, you'll know what is located there. A special vehicle could have marked the soil that way. So, did we unravel the mystery? Mm, not quite so. As you know, the Sahara Desert is one of the driest areas on the planet. The average high temperatures in summer are over 104 degrees Fahrenheit. To survive there, people need to find ways of accessing water. So, these circles could be a kind of ruin or leftovers from ancient water wells. Again, I'd say this is a sensible guess. Ready for some fact-checking? Some anthropologists agree that these circles could be ancient fogueras. Fagera is the name of a 2,500-year-old style of irrigation system, usually found in northern Africa. It is also known as a kanat in other places in northern Africa. Locals would dig a deep well at an elevated point, deep enough to tap into underground water. They would then dig parallel shafts at regular distances. Then, they would dig an underground channel that connected the city to the well. Solely with the help of gravity, water would run from the well to the city. This traditional technology provided water for crops, livestock, and humans. Now, let's say these wells made human-made oases possible. Even the closest municipality name was an indication that this could be true. The name Fagaret Esaoya is actually named after Fagarets, these ancient wells. Now, this lead was proving to be very accurate you decide to travel over there to see for yourself. You take a local bus, sit back, and enjoy the ride. The landscape in northern Algeria is filled with ancient-looking towns. You even see ruins of wells along the way, on the outskirts of smaller cities. Opening Google satellite images, you can see the Kanat's markings on the ground, a series of holes running down several miles. But as soon as you arrive, you find out you were wrong. 
Dale Lightfoot, one of the world's leading experts on canards, said that the circles were definitely not canards. Even the satellite images confirm this difference. Uh-oh, we were so close! Apparently, canards or fagras would not run down a straight line. They wouldn't be shaped like circles. Another clue that this wasn't the case was that there were no towns at the end. The circles were really far away from any human activity. And canards were explicitly built to provide water for human settlements. Well, it sure was a good try. Oh, that's really weird, Susie says, looking at a tree with a yellow bandage tied to it. She's been walking around a strange forest in southern Japan for an hour, and it seems she's got lost. She hung the bandage on the tree 30 minutes ago and started to walk right away from it. She didn't turn anywhere. She was walking straight. And then, half an hour later, she returned to this tree. Susie couldn't have gone far from the nearest settlement. She feels the forest is trying to deceive her. The trees are moving to not let her out of this place. All this looks like a horror movie. As night comes, a mysterious, invisible monster should appear and hang creepy crafts made of sticks on branches. Anyone would have panicked and started screaming for help. But not Susie. She smiles in the face of any danger. Besides, her phone and internet are on, so everything is fine. She takes a few steps to the side and ties a blue bandage to another cedar. Then she starts walking along a narrow path, moving further and further away from the marked tree. She notices something. The path has a slightly curved shape. Susie starts running forward and returns to the marked tree 10 minutes later. All this time, she's been just walking in a circle. Susie walks away to another tree and notices another curved path here. She takes her phone, opens online maps, and looks at her location through satellite photos. It's incredible. The trees in this place grow, forming concentric circles. There are several layers here. It resembles mysterious circular patterns that somebody left on fields all over the world. Shocked, Susie records herself on her phone to inform subscribers she has found a strange natural anomaly. While filming, she hears someone laughing. It's a smiling guy standing next to her. He finds it funny how she's speaking seriously about this forest. He tells her there's nothing unusual about this place. Trees grow in circles, thanks to people. In 1973, they planted cedars in such a way with purpose and created 10 concentric green circles. They did this as an experiment to find out how trees would grow in such rounded conditions. They called it experimental forestry. The trees started to grow in a convex shape, symmetrically fanning out. This proved that the size of gaps between the trees affects their growth. Initially, they had to cut down the trees according to the plan, but the place has become popular among tourists and locals. They love to take beautiful photos using drones and walk along the rounded paths of this little maze. Susie gets upset a little. She informs subscribers there's nothing mysterious here. The guy who told her about the circles offers her to visit the mysterious crooked forest in Poland. That's where she will definitely see a strange phenomenon. But before going there, she decides to check out another exciting place in Japan. She arrives in the fishing village of Aoshima. The first locals Susie meets here are cats. There are more of them than people. Cats are everywhere. They live here thanks to a lot of fish. Once upon a time, this place was full of mice that spoiled fishing boats. People brought cats to this place to fight the rodents. When all the mice had disappeared, the cats stayed here. Since then, people have been considering them as full-fledged citizens. The video with cats gets the most likes on Susie's channel. But now, as she promised, it's time to go to Poland. The forest looks weird thanks to the curved trees. The lower parts of their trunks are bent, making them look like bellies. It's also strange that they all point only to the north. Susie goes around the whole forest and counts about 400 trees. It seems people change the shapes of the trees. But for now, there's no evidence of this. It's believed they planted trees in the 1930s and damaged them during growing at an early age. Nobody can say why. There was a small village near the forest. Its locals probably knew the secret, but unfortunately, the town was destroyed more than 70 years ago. The key to the mystery disappeared along with it. Of course, scientists had hypotheses, but they were all quickly refuted. Perhaps this curved shape was caused by a genetic anomaly. There are trees with similar trunks in other forests of the planet. 
but here, the curves look too perfect and neat. It's like an artist worked on them. This suggests that something from the environment has affected them. You can find similar trees all over the world, but mostly, they're loners and never grow in such big groups. Perhaps snow falls on the tops every winter. Tree trunks bend under such a heavy weight. But why is only the lower part changing? And why do other trees in the forest look normal? Also, there's no explanation why these trees point north. Is there any purpose? The most plausible theory says that local farmers change tree shapes to create furniture and details for ship manufacturing. It's fast and easy to make a basket from such a tree, for example. That life outside of our planet may exist. The largest moon of Saturn, Titan, has many hydrocarbon lakes on the surface. And if the simplest forms of life appeared among a million tons of molten asphalt here on Earth, then nothing prevents them from appearing on Titan. We're going to Indonesia, to the island of Java. You need to climb a large volcano to see the next phenomenon. The volcano is overgrown with grass and trees, but it doesn't seem to be sleeping. Smoke is pouring out of its mouth. You climb to the top and see a clear lake instead of boiling magma. The blue sky is reflected in its bright turquoise surface. But don't try to jump there. This lake is filled with acid. The magma inside volcanoes comes from the deep bowels of the Earth's crust. The incandescent liquid consists of many molten metals and chemical compounds, and the lake is filled with particles of these metals. In addition, the volcano emits sulfur dioxide gases. When they combine with metals, they form a beautiful turquoise color. You'd better come back here at night. In some places, a lot of sulfur is concentrated. These accumulations come out of the lake and come into contact with the air. When this happens, everything around bursts into bright blue flame. It's safe to observe this from the side, but don't get too close. Nearby, on this island, there's another acid lake. It also releases sulfurous gases into the air, which are easily ignited when in contact with oxygen. And when this happens, the gases burst into a bright blue electric flame. It's difficult to see the flames during the day. At night, you can see these flashes from afar. Our next location is Australia. You start the drone high above the forest area. Among the green dense forests, you can see a bright pink spot. It's our lake. This time, the beautiful pink color may not stop you from swimming. You can relax here and take beautiful photos. The lake attracts thousands of tourists, but scientists have only recently been able to find out the reason for the unusual color. At the bottom of this salty lake in Melbourne, special algae grow and secrete a red pigment. In combination with sunlight, high temperatures, and a small amount of precipitation, it turns the lake pink. By the way, Australia is not the only place with such a phenomenon. There are lakes with a pink tinge of water all over the world. You can find them in Senegal, Bolivia, Kenya, and many other countries. The water of these places is also salty and contains the red pigment of unusual algae. We leave the hot beaches and fly to cold Canada. Here, we see a frozen Lake Abraham. We step on the ice and notice huge frozen bubbles inside. They resemble jellyfish, and there are thousands of them there. This is methane. It's a highly flammable substance. The grass, leaves, pieces of trees, and any organic substances that fall into the lake become food for a lot of bacteria that emit methane. Upon contact with frozen water, methane turns into tens of thousands of frozen balls. When the ice melts, the bubbles burst and sizzle. This phenomenon can also be observed on some shores of the Arctic Ocean. There, the size of the bubbles can reach several times more than balloons. It's a beautiful sight, but it's not safe, since methane ignites when it contacts with air. We're in the coldest place of our journey. It's Antarctica, near the driest desert on Earth. A dry place doesn't mean it has to be hot. It's an area with minimum precipitation. The desert isn't sand and cacti, but a place where almost no living life inhabits. Some areas of Antarctica meet these two criteria. However, in this icy desert, you can notice a tiny lake. Its depth is only a few inches. Technically, it's a pond. But the most amazing thing is that it stays in a liquid form. The temperature here drops to negative 58 degrees Fahrenheit. The pond should be frozen, but this doesn't happen. Don Juan Pond is one of the saltiest reservoirs on the planet. 
the amount of salt here doesn't allow the water to freeze. Scientists have been studying this lake for more than 60 years, but they still can't find out the exact reason for the appearance of water here. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.